Hello friends, welcome to our channel Learn and Have Fun. In this video, we will show you an amazing phenomenon called diffraction of light. Before we understand the concept of diffraction, let's observe and see how a light beam travels in a medium. Switch on a laser torch, observe the laser beam closely. Pay attention to the path of the laser beam. No doubt the laser beam is traveling in a straight line. That's why in junior classes you are told by your physics teachers that light travels in a straight line. This property is known as rectilinear propagation of light. What will be your reaction if I tell you that light doesn't travel in a straight line? It just travels like a wave. Surprised? Let's challenge the concept that light travels in a straight line. We place an opaque object such as pencil in the path of white light. When white light hit the pencil, on the screen you can see the sharp shadow of pencil with distinct dark and illuminated regions. Now, instead of white light, we are going to use the green laser torch in our activity. Switch on the laser torch and allow the beam to fall on the pencil. Do you expect the same type of shadow formation as you observe in the case of white light? Let's see. So what do you observe? The shadow is not perfectly dark. We observe some amount of green light at the regions where we were expecting a shadow that is a completely dark region. This shows that light actually does not travel in a straight line. It bends and enter in the region where shadow should be formed. This suggests that light somehow bends around the edges of the pencil and reaches at the shadow region. Thus, clearly violating the ray concept of light that states light travels in a straight line. Now, allow the laser light to fall on the tip of the pencil. Try to locate the shadow of the tip. You will notice that shadow of the tip is not clearly formed. Instead, a bright spot of laser is obtained at the place of the shadow and a few dark and bright green rings. The deviation from the straight line is observed only when we use monochromatic light, that is, light from a single wavelength, such as green laser beam, whose wavelength is 0.59 microns. With white light, the deviation is not observed due to overlapping of wavelengths. Nature is amazing. It hides our secret when we observe it in one set of conditions and reveals some when we observe in a different set of conditions. We will show you diffraction of light by human hair. Switch on the laser torch. You can see the green spot on the screen. Now slowly introduce the hair in the path of the light. Instead of getting the shadow of the hair, we obtain bright and dark fringes on the screen. This phenomenon is known as diffraction of light. Let's understand the phenomenon in detail. The average thickness of human hair is about 75 microns and the wavelength of green laser beam is 0.59 microns. Thus, the size of the human hair is very much comparable to the wavelength of the green laser. When an object whose dimension is comparable to the wavelength of the light, such as human hair, then light on striking it bends around its edges and produces the diffraction pattern on the screen. The pattern has a central maximum brightness and many smaller and dimmer maxima on either side of it. Thus, the pattern consists of alternate bright and dark band. The dark band indicates complete absence of light in that region. The bright band indicates that this region is receiving light after getting diffracted from the object. This is amazing. It is like at some particular regions light is not allowed to enter and it forms a dark band. And at some other region light is allowed to enter and thus forming a bright band. This strange behavior of light can be explained if we assume light as a wave. Laser beam travels with a fixed wave width. When the light wave arrives at the hair, it becomes the source of secondary wavelets, which then travels in all directions. At the center of the pattern, all wavelets arrive in phase, 
thus producing a central maximum. Wavelets arriving at an angle to the central maximum may be out of phase or in phase depending upon the angle it forms with the central maximum. At some points the wavelet interferes destructively where it reaches out of phase which results in a dark band and at some points the wavelet interferes constructively where it reaches in phase which results in a bright band. This video is mainly focused on the ways to obtain the diffraction and wave theory behind this. A detailed mathematical explanation will be done in our next video.